So what's Elon Musk been up to lately? I mean, besides the usual X drama. And speaking of X, can we talk about those outages? Because apparently when you're busy revolutionizing transportation and artificial intelligence, keeping a social media platform running smoothly becomes optional. But hey, at least the tweets about the outages were working. So that's something. Prioritizing, you know. But seriously, while everyone's been focused on whatever's happening in the daily news cycle, Musk has been quietly, well, not quietly at all, actually, working on some pretty wild stuff. And I don't mean wild in the usual tech CEO way where they promise flying cars that never materialize. I mean wild in the holy crap, this is actually happening kind of way. If this kind of deep dive into the truly wild corners of tech sounds interesting to you, do us a favor, hit that like button, share this video with a friend who needs to see this, and of course, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss our next breakdown. Let me walk you through what's been going on because honestly, it's a lot, and it's all connected in ways that are starting to feel less like coincidence and more like a plan. First up, let's talk about the brain, the really, really big brain. So you might have heard about Grok 3.5, the big AI update that was supposed to come out, the one everyone was talking about, the beta that was dropping next week for, well, for quite a while. You know how it goes. The eternal soon. They're skipping straight to Grok 4, which is launched just after July 4th. And no, that timing isn't a coincidence. Because if you're going to release an artificial intelligence that you claim can rewrite human knowledge, why not do it right after America's birthday? Very thematic. But here's the thing about Grok 4 that makes it fundamentally different from almost every other AI announcement we've been hearing about from other big tech companies. Most companies are trying to build better chatbots, more helpful assistants, smarter autocomplete systems that finish your sentences before you even know what you're trying to say. That's the game everyone's playing. Musk, it seems, isn't playing that game. He's playing a different one entirely. He's using Grok 2, and this is a direct quote, revise the entire corpus of human knowledge. As in, Go through everything humans have ever written down, every piece of information, every fact, every widely accepted truth, and fix it, correct it. Make it, in Grok's estimation, better. It's the kind of goal that sounds completely insane. It's the plot of a sci-fi novel where the AI eventually decides humanity's knowledge base needs a major rewrite. It's the kind of thing you'd expect a supervillain to announce from a secret lair. No big deal, just doing a quick re-edit of all human information. Should be wrapped up by Tuesday. But here's the kicker. They're actually building the infrastructure to do it. XAI is constructing what they call a gigafactory of compute, up to a million of NVIDIA's most powerful Blackwell GPUs all working together in a giant, connected supercomputer. Think about that scale. The kind of computational power that most countries can only dream of. And the cost? Well, reports suggest they're burning through about a billion dollars per month just to run this thing. A billion dollars a month to build a brain that can fact-check humanity. It's either the most ambitious project ever attempted or the most expensive way to win arguments on the internet. Maybe both. The promise for Grok 4 is pretty staggering. It's going to have dramatically enhanced reasoning capabilities, which means it won't just answer questions. It'll solve multi-step problems, engage in complex logical deductions. It's supposed to have advanced coding features, allowing it to write and debug intricate software on its own. And that knowledge base? It's being actively curated and corrected by Grok itself, rather than just passively scraped from the public internet. If even half of that is true, we're looking at something genuinely, profoundly different. Let's talk about Tesla's humanoid robot. And no, I'm not talking about those early prototypes that looked like someone stapled a screen to a mannequin and called it a day. Remember those? They were something. This is Optimus V3, and it's actually working. It's less of a science experiment and more of a factory worker now. It's walking around Tesla factories unassisted. It's picking up parts, handling delicate components with those surprisingly dexterous human-like hands, doing real, actual factory work. It's got Tesla-designed actuators, incredible balance, and apparently the ability to have conversations. Because here's the plot twist, and this is where it all starts connecting. These robots are running Grok. When you watch the latest demo videos, you can see them responding to natural language commands, engaging in actual back-and-forth conversations, thinking through problems in real time. They're not just following pre-programmed instructions anymore. They're understanding. They're processing. They're thinking. Or at least doing a very convincing impression of it. And that's all thanks to Grok. The production numbers for Optimus are ambitious, even by Tesla standards, which is saying something. They're aiming to build around 5,000 units in 2025. 5,000 humanoid robots. And by 2029 or 2030, the goal is to scale that up to millions annually. Yes, millions. And I know those numbers sound completely crazy like something out of a futuristic movie where all the jobs are gone. And speaking of which, there was this viral post from a Tesla employee recently, warning that Optimus could eliminate up to 80% of manual labor jobs in their factories. And that's, 
Well, that's a whole conversation we're probably not ready to have yet, a big existential one, but it's a conversation that's coming whether we're ready or not, because these aren't just industrial robots, these are general purpose humanoids. They can walk upstairs, open doors, operate in spaces designed for humans. The implications go way beyond manufacturing. Think about logistics, elder care, hazardous environments, the list is honestly endless. But while Tesla's building robots that can work in our world, they're also building something else, something that can navigate through it. Tesla robo-taxis are no longer a someday maybe promise. They're picking up passengers, right now, in Austin, Texas. June 22nd was the launch date. 10 sleek, black Model Y vehicles just started operating as taxis. No human drivers in the front seat. Well, okay, there are safety monitors in each car, you know, for just in case, and remote operators on standby. But the cars are doing the actual driving. It's invitation only for now, running from six in the morning until midnight, in what Tesla carefully calls the safest parts of Austin which is corporate speak for we're not ready for the full glorious chaos of real world driving yet. But hey, it's a start, a literal functional start. So how's it actually working out? Well, that depends on what you mean by working. The technical side seems to be functioning. The cars are picking up passengers, getting them where they need to go, and crucially, not crashing into things. That's a pretty good baseline for success, I'd say, especially when you consider how many human-driven cars still manage to do that. The regulatory side is, as always, more complicated. Texas lawmakers actually tried to delay the launch until September because of new self-driving laws they wanted to put in place. And various safety advocates have staged protests, highlighting potential risks. The usual concerns about jobs, liability, whether society is actually ready for this kind of leap. But the launch happened anyway. And the plan is to expand to Los Angeles and San Francisco next, which is bold. Austin is one thing, but LA traffic is basically a real-world stress test for any autonomous system. It's like asking a baby to run a marathon. The interesting thing is how cautious these cars are. They're programmed to be overly careful, to the point where they might actually be statistically safer than human drivers in some situations. But they're also slower, more hesitant. They stop for things that wouldn't even make a human driver think twice, like a particularly aggressive shadow. It's the classic early adopter trade-off. Better in some ways, worse in others, but definitely, undeniably different. And here's the thing that's becoming clear about the robo-taxis. This isn't just about transportation, it's about data. Every mile these cars drive, every decision they make, every confusing edge case they encounter, it's all feeding back into the system, into that massive grok brain, making the next generation smarter. It's a self-improving loop, out there on the streets. Here's what's becoming crystal clear. These aren't just separate projects anymore. They're components of the same grand system. The robo-taxis and Optimus robots are the physical bodies, the ones that move and interact with the real world. Grok is the massive, ever-learning brain that controls them, interpreting data, making decisions, and even correcting its own understanding of reality. Starlink provides the global communication network, connecting everything, everywhere. The boring company builds the high-speed infrastructure for it all to move through, literally beneath our feet. It's a vertically integrated stack for, well, for running the world, basically. And the timeline is aggressive. Maybe unrealistically so. I mean, it probably is. But then again, we said the same thing about electric cars becoming mainstream, about reusable rockets making space access affordable, about global satellite internet. And look where we are now. The pattern is familiar. Big promises, skeptical reactions, gradual progress, followed by a sudden, undeniable breakthrough. Right now, it feels very much like we're in that sudden breakthrough phase. Six months ago, if I told you that by the end of June 2025, Tesla would be running an actual taxi service with self-driving cars picking up passengers, you probably would have laughed. If I told you they'd have humanoid robots doing actual factory work, you'd have been skeptical, maybe a little concerned. If I told you they'd have an AI preparing to revise human knowledge, you'd have thought I was exaggerating wildly. But here we are. All three of those things are happening, right now, in the real world. So what happens next? Well. That's the billion-dollar-a-month question. We're potentially looking at a world where the physical and digital realms are seamlessly connected, where artificial intelligence doesn't just help us with tasks, but actively participates in running society, moving goods, manufacturing products, and constantly refining its own understanding of the world. It's the kind of future that's been promised for decades but always seemed just out of reach, something that felt like it belonged in the movies. Until now. Because ready or not, that future is coming and it's arriving faster than most of us expected. The real question isn't whether this technology will work. Based on what we've seen just in the past few weeks, it's clearly working. The question is, 
What do we do when it works at scale? If this kind of look at the future helps you make sense of things, or just gives you something to think about, please make sure to give this video a like, share it with someone who'd find it as fascinating as you did, and definitely subscribe for more deep dives into what's next. We'll see you in the next one.